This is the Let's Pretend story of Dick Whittington and his cat. Come one, come all the big and small, we're here with Let's Pretend. You'll laugh, you'll cry, and wonder why until the very end. The joyous story telling to all we do is ten. So give a cheer, cause look what's here, another Let's Pretend. Hi, pretenders. Hi, Hi little cat. cat. You know, if you want a faithful companion, you'd probably choose a dog. But for a pretty independent creature that likes to sit in your lap, you choose a cat. A cat also has quite a special talent for catching mice. Yes, Emily. And wait till you hear how the hero of our story profits from that. Lance, suppose you tell us how we travel to meet him. Well, the cat in the story goes off in a sailing ship. Could we travel that way, too? Why not? Sean, will you arrange the magic? Glad to, Uncle Ted. Magical supply men... We'd like a fine, full-rigged sailing ship. One, two, three. And there we are. All aboard, everybody. We'll haul up the anchor, set the sails, and we're off for the land of Let's Pretend and the story of Dick Whittington and his cat. Once upon a time, when the bells of London rang morning, noon, and night, a poor orphan boy came to the city to seek his fortune. But it wasn't so easy to find work as he'd hoped. Finally, one night, he stopped, tired and hungry, before a rich house on a quiet street. Down the road, the bells sounded. At last, he gathered enough courage to go round to the back door. Well? Well, who is it? What do you want? Please, please, ma'am. It's only because I'm starving. If you could spare a bit of bread... I thought so. Another good-for-nothing beggar. Go on, now. Get away from here. We've nothing for lazy loafers like you. But I can't walk another step. I've been walking all day, and I was walking all yesterday... I'm so faint now, I... I... Oh, ah, and now you fall down on my clean doorstep. Oh, I'll get Mins to haul you off into the gutter where you belong. Mins! Mins! My goodness, Cook, what's the matter? Oh, Miss Alice, I was calling the butler to get rid of this lazy loafer here. Oh, Mins is off on an errand for father, but... Cook! Why, that poor boy, he's ill. Oh, he's just trying to catch a free meal. No, I'll... I'll work. I'll, I'll, I'll do no, anything. No, no, no. Don't, don't try to get up. Father! Oh, Father! Bothering Captain Fitzwarren with this no good. Leave it to me. I'll get rid of it. What's all the excitement out there, Alice? Cook? Well, who's that? Oh, Father, it's a poor young lad, half starved. We must help him. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, you're right, Alice. Here, here, boy. Let me help you up and into the kitchen. Well, a ball of soft-headed... How do you know he's not a thief or a murderer? Oh, Cook, now stop it. Just look at him and you'll see he means no harm. Just go get some milk now, Cook. Some bread, too, while I help him into this chair. There. There you are, boy. I I thank you, sir. More than I can say. I'm I'm sorry to have collapsed. Now, 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 now. The cook has some milk for you. Drink it here. Slowly, though. And bread, as ordered. And a bit of pudding, too. Since we're out to feed the riffraff of London, should I get him a fowl, too? Easy now, Cook. I'm no more anxious to encourage vagrants than anyone else. But this lad has a good face, and he's not much older than Alice here. Well, feel better, boy? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. That milk was wonderful. Like to tell us your name now? My name is Dick Whittington, sir. Dick Whittington? And I've come to London looking for any kind of honest work... I don't seem to have had much luck. But anything I can do for you to repay this kindness... Well, get to work on that bread and pudding right now, Dick. And after that, Cook can find you a place to sleep in the loft. Oh, sir, oh, thank you. And tomorrow, I guess we can find something for you to do around here? Oh, you shan't be sorry, sir. I'll work hard. I'm sure you will. Well, good night now, Dick. Good night, Dick Whittington. Right, 
boy. Hey, you! Up there in that loft! Yes, Cook. Coming right away. When those bowl bells ring for six o'clock, I want you down here, boy. There'll be no sleep in the morning through while you're working for me. No, ma'am. But what was it you called those bells, ma'am? Bowl bells, of course. They're the bells on the church of Mary LeBeau, right down the street. Bowl bells? You know, Cook, this morning and last night, too, it almost seemed as if those bells were saying something to me. It almost seemed as if I heard words, a, a message. Heard words? <laughs> So it's not a thief or a murderer the captain's wished on me. It's a loony, that's what. And what were the bells saying, if I may ask? I, I couldn't really tell. I I guess it was just a fancy, Cook. Well, you can give over fancies now if you want to stay healthy around here, boy. Come on now, get the fire started. Yes, ma'am. Could I ask you just one more thing, Cook? Hurry with that fire. Yes, ma'am. It's about the rats up in the loft... The rats, eh? Who <laughs> are they saying something to you, too? No, it's just there are so many of them, Cook. I could hardly sleep at all for their scrabbling and scurrying and squeaking. Well, isn't that a pity now? Want me to tell the captain he'd best move you to the best bedroom at once? It'd be in more in keeping with what you're used to. Oh, Cook, no. I, I only wondered if there wasn't something I could do about the rats. I wondered if you had some sort of trap. Want to get rid of the rats? Get yourself a cat. A cat? A lean, hungry cat's the best rat trap there is. A cat? Oh, yes, and she could keep me company, too. I wonder where I could get one. Out in the alley, any dark night. You can take your pick of a dozen. Oh, no. No, I wouldn't want to just take one. I'd want her to be my own, honestly purchased and paid for. With what? Yes, that's the trouble. I haven't a penny. But... Maybe, maybe I'll find a way to earn a few. Running special errands for Captain Fitzwarren someday. Maybe you'll find yourself out of a job entirely if you don't hurry a bit with those fires. They're all started now, ma'am. Burning nicely. What can I do next? Go draw the water. Then you can peel the potatoes. Step now. And let's have an end of your talk about cats and rats and bells of talk. The water now, Dick Whittington. Puss, you were waiting for me, were you? <laughs> Look at you, winding about my ankles. Glad to see you too, Tabby. And glad I am I bought you. Why, you're the only friendly creature I see from one day's end to another. <coughs> Excepting for the rare times I see Miss Alice, or the captain. They're nice. But that cook... Boy! Hey, boy! Oh, you hear, Tabby? I'm calling you, boy! I hear you, Cook. Well, come then and be quick about it. You're wanted in the house. All right, I'm coming. Well, here I go again, Tabby. You've caught all the rats long since, so I guess you'll just have to nap again till I get back. Boy! You may be glad to know it's Captain Fitzwarren you're keeping waiting now. Captain Fitzwarren wants me? Yes. Come on. Step along. He's in the library. And you're part of the household, too, he says. He's seeing us all this afternoon. Ah, here we are. Come in, come in. Ah, yes, Cook, and you have Dick Good. Hello, Dick Whittington. Good afternoon, Captain Fitzwarren. Good afternoon, Miss Alice, ma'am. Hello, Dick. Well, now, we're all here, Cook, Mims, and Dick. I guess uh, you're the only one who may not know what it's all about. No, sir. Well, my ship... The Unicorn is ready to sail tomorrow morning for a year's voyage to the Orient. It's the custom here for every servant in the captain's household to send something aboard the ship to bring us luck and ensure a safe voyage. Uh, you'll be thinking what you'll send while I ask the others. Mims, you're first. Uh, I'm sending 20 pounds, sir, hoping it will be doubled in trade with the merchants of other lands and my humble respects into the bargain. Very good, Mims. Very good. I hope I do bring you back 40 pounds for your investment. All right, Cook, how about you? <laughs> well, sir, I've made you a plum pudding, knowing it's your favorite <laughs> sweet. <laughs> yes, it is indeed, Cook, and I'm glad, glad to carry that aboard. Now, Dick Whittington. Oh, sir, I'm... Don't be bashful, Dick. It can be any little thing. Yes, Miss Alice. The trouble is, 
I haven't anything at all that's really mine. Nothing at all except Tabby. Uh, Tabby? <laughs> a scrawny, good-for-nothing cat he bought with some pennies you gave him one day, Captain. Begging your pardon, ma'am, Tabby's not scrawny, and she's cleaned up all the rats in the stable. She's a fine cat, Captain Fitzwarren, and... Captain, could I send Tabby on the voyage? <laughs> Cat? Oh, Dick, you don't mean that, do you? I know how fond you are of Tabby. You'd miss her very much, I know. Yes, of course I would, Miss Alice. But I would like to send something. And perhaps Tabby would bring the ship good luck. Very well, my boy. If that's how you wish it, that's how it shall be. Tabby will go with us as the mascot of the unicorn. A cat? <laughs> Well, now you've made a fool of yourself, boy. Go get the ugly creature you wished on the captain. <laughs> Cook's bark is worse than her bite, I know. But run along now, Dick, as she suggested. Get your cat, and then you can all wish me Godspeed. <laughs> So Captain Fitzwarren sailed off aboard the unicorn. But alas, he was wrong about one thing. The cook's bark wasn't worse than her bite. At least so far as Dick was concerned. As soon as the captain was gone, Cook wasted no time in treating Dick as badly as possible. She kept him jumping from dawn to late at night. And if he was the least bit slow... Oh! That'll teach you to dilly-dally when I send you on an errand. But, Cook, I wasn't dilly-dallying. I had to wait at the butcher's and Be quiet, I... or I'll switch you again. Oh, if Captain Fitzwarren were home, he wouldn't let you mistreat me as you do. Or Miss Alice, if she knew how you beat me, she... Just let me hear you telling her, my lad. Just let me hear of you speaking to her. Let go of me. You're hurting my arm. I'll hurt you more unless I get your promise. You won't be speaking to Miss Alice. The way I choose to train a no-good servant boy is my business. Of course I won't tell her. I never would have. Let go. All right. Watch the fires. I have to go down to the greengrocers now. And I'll be gone an hour or more. Yes, Cook. And I'll know if you've sat around doing nothing whilst I was gone. <laughs> Mooning about that cat you sent off to sea. <laughs> Pity you didn't send yourself with the creature... <coughs> And fall overboard. Oh, I can't stand it any longer. I can't. It's no use. Why do I stay on here when all I get is slaps and beatings from morning till night? I'm leaving. First thing before dawn tomorrow, I'm leaving London and all its troubles for good. Oh, oh it's cold at this hour. And the streets, so dark and deserted. Turn here, I guess. Where are you bound for, laddie? If you're heading in toward the market, I'll give you a lift. Thank you, sir. You're very kind, but I'm bound the other way. I'm leaving London for good. Well, sounds like you don't like the place too much. There's no luck in London for me, I've decided. That's why I'm turning my back on it now. Hark! Bells are ringing six. I must be on the way now. Giddy up. Giddy up, you lad. Giddy up. The bow bells. I'll miss them when I'm gone from London. Turn again, Whittington. Thrice Lord Mayor of London. The bells. They're speaking again. And, and this time... Turn again, Whittington. Turn again, Whittington. That's what they're saying. Thrice Lord Mayor of London. Thrice Lord Mayor of London? Can it be? Is it really a prophecy that one day I might be... Oh, it is impossible. But who knows? If fate is speaking through the bells... I'm going back. Maybe there is luck for me in London yet. So he did turn back. And now we find him in the kitchen of the Fitzwarren house again. Dick! Dick Whittington! Oh, Miss Alice, here I am. May I help you in some way? Oh, yes, Dick. Poor Mins, the butler, is ill. Oh, no. I'm sorry. His sister has come to take him home. She'll look after him. But that means I'm going to have to depend on you, Dick, to look after things as Min's always did. Will you mind, Dick? Mind? 
Oh, Miss Alice, thank heavens I'm here to help you. Thank heavens I did listen to the bells. The bells? I... Oh, you'd laugh, Miss Alice. It doesn't matter what they seem to say. They brought me back. Brought you back? Dick, had you left? I... I'm sorry, Miss Alice. I, I never would have. If I thought you needed me... It was the cook, that old crosspatch of a cook. But she shan't order you around and scream at you anymore. You're going to work for me now, Dick. I know that's what Father would want. You can depend on me, Miss Alice. I'm sure I can, Dick Whittington. Meanwhile, far across the sea, Captain Fitzwarren's ship has put in at Morocco, on the shores of Africa. And a very odd thing has happened. The Moorish king and queen, delighted with the goods in the captain's ship, have asked the captain to dinner. But no sooner do the king and queen and the captain enter the rich dining hall than the queen cries out. Oh, there's one. There's another. Oh, husband, I thought the servants had gotten rid of them. Be calm, be calm, Mr. Lita. Captain Fitzwarren, I ask your pardon. Oh, what shall we do? What shall we do? Excuse me, madam. Perhaps I could help. Oh, sir, we are most embarrassed. Uh, I had hoped that our plague would not show itself so clearly while you were here. Your uh, your plague? We call it that. Swarms of little animals that appear whenever the food is set out. Look. By all that's holy, rats. You know these horrible creatures? You've seen the like before? I have indeed. We suffer from the ugly pests at home, too. Oh! Oh, look at them! They're up on the table, eating the food. My dear, I pray you, you've seen them before. Captain, do you know any remedy against them? Any way to get rid of them? Why, of course. Have you no cats here in Morocco? Cats? What are they? You don't know cats? Well, well, of all the luck, of all the strange and improbable luck. Captain, what is it? Oh, oh, those dreadful, dreadful creatures. We must do something, husband. We shall, Your Majesty, at once. Only be patient for five minutes while I send a messenger to my ship for the creature who is the answer to your troubles, Dick Whittington's cat. <laughs> Yes, here we are, Your Majesties. I have Tabby here in this basket. What an odd and pretty creature. Oh, oh, those rats! You'll see now, Your Majesty, Tabby's not only odd and pretty, she's the answer to your uh, plague. Watch her now as I open the basket. See that rat? She's running after it! She has it! Oh, oh, all the rats are running! After them, Tabby, let her go! <laughs> look, look, she has another! And another! It's a miracle! Quick as lightning, she catches and kills them! <gasps> Captain, this Tabby, we must have her! Oh, what will you sell her for? Oh, I'm sorry, Your Majesty. She belongs to a serving boy of mine at home in London. He lent her to me as a ship's mascot. Oh, oh another rat! No, she has it. It's dead, like the rest. There's not a rat left in the room. We must have her, Captain. We'll give you anything for that little creature. I will give you three times what I've already paid for all the rest of your merchandise put together. Yes, but that's a fortune, Your Majesty. It would total over a a million. Never mind. We must have her. We must. A million in gold for that cat, Captain. Come, how can you say no? A million? I guess I can't. Very well, Your Majesty, the cat is yours. And so the captain traded Dick's cat for a great cargo of gold and set sail for home. But contrary winds blew steadily. The ship ran into one difficulty after another. The days mounted into months, the months into a year, two years. And back home, in London. Oh, Dick, do you think we will ever hear from my father again? Of course we will, Miss Alice. But three years, and he was due to return in one. 
And next week is my birthday. I'll be 18. Perhaps you'll be back for that happy day, Miss Alice. Try not to worry. Alice! Oh, Alice, my child! Dick! Oh, no. Is it Father? Alice, I'm home. Father! Oh, I can't believe my eyes. <laughs> but it's I all right, my dear. And how you've grown. You're a young lady. And Dick, my lad. Sir, it's good to see you. What is it? Is it the captain? And cook, too, to welcome me. Greetings to you all. Oh, Father, when did you come into port? Was it a good voyage? Oh, tell us everything. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, we came into port an hour ago. And as for it being a good voyage, well... <laughs> In here with those chests, men. Father, what is it? What's in that chest? And there's another. And another. Father, what's in them? <laughs> gold, my girl. Sack after sack of gold. Oh, oh. Captain Fitzwarren, you've come back a rich man. Oh, how oh. wonderful. Congratulations, Captain. All right, men. That will be all. Oh, oh, what riches! Easy, oh. easy now, Cook. Uh, Dick, will you step over here for a moment? Why, yes, sir. Thank you for your congratulations, but they go the other way, Dick. You're the rich man. These chests of gold belong to you. What? Captain, sir! I, 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 I don't understand, sir. Well, it's a long story, Dick, and one will tell often, I dare say. But briefly... I traded your tabby cat for this fortune. Oh, Father, it's not possible. Nevertheless, it's true, Alice. Dick's cat came as a, an answer to a prayer in far Morocco, where they were suffering from a plague of rats. The king offered me all this for the cat. Did I make a good trade, Dick? Oh, sir, sir, I, I don't know what to say, but I, I can't keep all this... It's yours and, and Miss Alice's. Oh, no, it's yours. With my heartiest best wishes, Dick. And I'm happy to see that while I've been gone, you've grown into a man into whose hands I'm proud to give the treasure. Sir, Captain Fitzwarren, it's... It's like a dream. It's a nightmare. I thought I'd see that worthless boy put in his place. But instead... <laughs> Come now, Cook. Forget the old grudge, and I will too. Oh, sir... Oh, Miss Alice. Dick, I'm so glad. I'm so happy. Every dream, Dick? Every dream? Well, I... There's another even dearer, Captain Fitzwarren. Dare I speak now? Dare you speak? Well, of course, lad. Oh, sir, I, I love your daughter. And now I can take care of her. Would you consider... Dare I ask? Well, well, this is all pretty sudden. <laughs> do you love Dick, Alice? Oh, I do, Father. Oh, Oh, is there no end to the horrors? Oh, come now, Cook. Wonders, perhaps, but not horrors. Very well, children. If you love each other, my blessings on you both. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you, sir. I can't tell you how happy I am. Hark, the bow bells. How good to hear them again. Look ahead, fitting time. Listen. Again they speak. Thrice, Lord Mayor of London. Thrice, Lord Mayor of London. What? What are you saying, Dick? You didn't hear the voice of the bells, Alice? Never mind. Fact or fancy, I believe them now. With you beside me, Alice, I could be Lord Mayor of London one day. That I believe, Dick, dear. Look ahead, Whittington. Look ahead, Whittington. <laughs> yes, look ahead. Look ahead with me, Alice, to a wonderful future. Vice Lord Mayor of London. <laughs> Thank you.